Hello, welcome to uh, the second session of uh, Unit 1 of International Trade. I'm your host, Elias. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at the comparative advantage as the basis for trade. In other words, we want to see why nations should trade trade with each other and uh, specifically some of the reasons uh, which will be brought out is that uh, if uh, some nations the inefficiencies between uh, two nations in productions is less compared to the other then uh, there is a basis for mutually beneficial trade okay so let's uh, begin uh, by looking uh, straight into the uh, comparative advantage. Okay, so uh, the comparative advantage states that even if one nation is less efficient than the other nation in the production of both commodities, there is still a basis for mutually beneficial trade. What needs to be done is that uh, the first nation, in this case, if we assume nation A, uh, should specialize in the production and export of the commodity in which the absolute disadvantage is smaller compared to the other nation and then import the commodity in which its absolute disadvantage is greater. What this means is that uh, let's in, in our case, in the case that we looked at uh, in uh, the previous video, where nation A had uh, an absolute advantage in the production of commodity A uh, of commodity X and an absolute disadvantage in the production of commodity Y. It means that if nation A has is uh, less efficient in producing commodity Y, it means it has to leave that commodity for nation B to produce. Nation A should specialize in producing commodity X. In addition to that, there even if Nation A had an absolute advantage in both commodities, in the production of both X and Y, Nation A and B could still trade because all we will look at is that if there is uh, the levels of absolute disadvantage between the two nations, the one with a smaller absolute disadvantage in relation to Nation B should be left for Nation B to produce and the one with a greater absolute disadvantage for nation B should be produced by nation A. Therefore, even if one nation ha uh, is less efficient in the production of both commodities, two nations can still trade by each specializing in a commodity where the absolute disadvantage is smaller. Okay, so let's uh, take uh, a look at the assumptions that we make uh, under comparative advantage. Number one is that we are only assuming two nations. Uh, in this case, we can say nation A and nation B. And we are also assuming that we are only dealing with two goods, that is good X and good Y. And remember, we are making this assumption, uh, this assumption to ensure that we make uh, our analysis as simple as possible. The second assumption is that we have free trade, meaning there are no border restrictions uh, between or among nations in terms of the movements of goods and services to and from a given country. Okay, then we also assume perfect mobility of labor within each nation, but immobility between the two nations. In this case, uh, we assume that labor can move freely within a given economy from one uh, production side to the other, but labor cannot cross borders to go and uh, produce commodities in the other uh, side or in the other country. Therefore, there will be perfect mobility within, but immobility uh, between uh, nation A and B. We assume that we have constant cost of production, and this means that over time, as we continue in the production process, our costs will not be changing, they will be fixed. Therefore, whatever level of output we will have, our costs will not be affected. We will assume no transportation costs, 
Meaning commodities can freely move from one uh, side of the country to the other side, to another country, and uh, the movement of such commodities will be at no cost. We assume no technical change, meaning whatever techniques the, uh, the country has employed will be used throughout uh, the production process. And finally, we assume the labor theory of value, meaning labor is the only factor of production. Okay, so given these assumptions and given the brief introduction that we've given uh, in terms of the definition of comparative advantage, let's now look at an example and see how we can uh, develop the absolute advantage, uh, we can develop from the absolute advantage to the comparative advantage based on uh, uh, Ricardo. Okay, so let's uh, consider this uh, table where we have a uh, nation A producing six units of X in an hour and four units of Y in an hour. While nation B is producing one unit of X in an hour and two units of Y in an hour. Now, the question here is, which nation has an absolute advantage in the production of commodity X? Let me leave this for you uh, to answer. So which nation has an absolute advantage in the production of commodity X. Okay, so if you said nation A, then you are right. So you will see that nation A produces six units of X in an hour, while the same uh, hour is used by nation B to produce only one unit of X, which means that nation A is more efficient in producing commodity X than nation B. So, A has an absolute advantage in the production of commodity X, while B has an absolute disadvantage in the production of commodity X. The second question is, which nation has an absolute advantage in the production of commodity Y? I'll leave this for you to answer as well. Well, if you said nation A, then you are right. So we see that nation A uh, produces four units of commodity Y in an hour, while nation B produces two units of Y in the same one hour, which means that nation A is more efficient in the production of commodity Y compared to nation B, and therefore, Nation A has an absolute advantage in the production of commodity Y. Clearly, we see that Nation A has an absolute advantage in the production of both commodity X and commodity Y, which means that Nation A is more efficient in the production of both commodities than Nation B. And Nation B, we see that Nation B is less efficient in the production of both commodities uh, compared to Nation A. And this means Nation B has an absolute disadvantage in the production of both commodities. According to Ricardo, even if Nation B has an absolute disadvantage in both commodity X and Y, there is still basis for mutually beneficial trade. Nation B will have to specialize in the commodity where the absolute disadvantage is smaller compared to the other nation. And therefore, then the two nations can trade after the production has taken place. Let's analyze uh, the, uh, by seeing which country has a comparative advantage. So let's begin with the first commodity. So which nation has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity X? Now, in looking at that, in answering this question, you need to look at the units produced in each nation. So we start with uh, nation uh, with commodity X. In one hour, Nation A is producing six units of X. In one hour, Nation B is producing one unit of X. If you check 
the gap here, or if you want, you can get the ratio, you will see that the gap here is big. Nation B has to produce, need six hours for it to produce the six units that nation A is producing. So we see that for nation B to be uh, at the same pace with nation A in terms of output levels, it will need six hours. If we go to commodity Y, we see that for nation A, for nation A, it will produce four units in one hour. Nation B will produce two units in one hour. Meaning that for nation B to be at the same level of output with nation A, it will need two hours. So clearly, we see that for a commodity X, nation B will need six hours to produce the same amount as nation A. Whereas for commodity Y, nation B will only need two hours to produce the same amount of uh, uh, of y as uh, compared with with what nation a is producing and this clearly shows then that nation a has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity x compared to nation b or nation b has a comparative disadvantage in the production of commodity x with respect to nation a the next question we have is which nation has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity Y? Now, with this, we see that since nation A, the gap here is smaller. In other words, nation A has a huge advantage in producing X than it has in producing Y. Then it means that the efficiency levels for nation A are more in producing X than they are in producing Y. And therefore, nation A, nation A will have an, a comparative disadvantage in producing commodity Y because it has a lower efficiency level. So the absolute disadvantage for nation B is smaller in the, uh, producing Y, which means that nation B has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity Y. Now, suppose that nation A can trade 6 units of X for 6 units of Y with nation B. What are the gains from trade for each nation? Now, in answering this question, we need to go back to the table and uh, look at the figures and uh, see what we can get. Now, if nation A specializes in the production of commodity X, and nation B specializes in production of commodity Y, it means that nation A will have to channel the one hour which was supposed to be used for the production of Y and bring it to the production of X. With that done, it means that nation A then will produce 12 units of X and zero units of Y. And if nation B will have to produce commodity Y, which, uh, which is a commodity of its comparative advantage, it means that it will have to channel the hours of producing commodity X to the production of commodity Y. Now, look at this. For nation uh, B to acquire, to produce the six units which it will get from nation A, it will need six hours. So, those commodities then, instead of analyzing it from the X point of view, we take it to the Y point of view. So, we will channel all the six hours that were needed to produce six units of X to the production of commodity Y. And this will mean that nation B then will produce 12 units of commodity, uh, of commodity Y. And if we allow this happen, then it means that there will be zero units of uh, commodity X produced in nation two. Now, because nation A is exchanging six units of X for six units of Y, it means that we subtract the six which nation A is producing of X, 
and uh, this will give us uh, six units of X which will remain in nation A after the trade. And uh, on the other side, it means that nation B then is importing the six units from nation A. So we add the six units here and then uh, this will give us a total of uh, six units. And these units that we are putting here are the consumption levels for nation A and for nation B. If we go to commodity Y, since nation A is exporting six of X, and then importing six of y it means we are adding here six units of y that are being imported and this will give us a total of uh, six units of y for nation a for nation b we will subtract six units because six units are exported to nation a and therefore nation uh, b will remain with six units of y now from this clearly we can see that uh, out of the production that the nation has done we can see that for nation a nation a will gain uh, six sorry two units of uh, commodity x of commodity y what will be the gains then for nation b I'll leave that for you to guess, uh, to answer, given this analysis that we've done. Okay, so the gains for nation, if you said six, you are right. So the gains for nation B will be the six units that are remaining. So nation A gains two units, while nation B gains six units. So now, if that is the case, do you think there is complete specialization in this analysis we've done or not? So we have assumed here that we have uh, done the complete specialization. So nation A completely specialized in X and nation B completely specialized in Y. Okay, so let's uh, go through the analysis and uh, come up with the uh, trade range or the mutually beneficial or advantageous uh, trade range. So since nation A could exchange six units of X for four units of Y domestically, because both require one hour to produce, then nation A would gain if it could exchange six units of X for more than four units of Y from nation B. That is, from the point of view of uh, nation A, the four units of uh, Y, for it to gain, it means the units exchange, these must, uh, must be more than uh, than four so we should be increasing from four and therefore to any range so we are targeting that my uh, beneficial range my trade range will take me all the way to 6x so any amount between these will make nation a to gain in other words if nation a can get as many units of uh, of a of y uh, the better for it. So it means that we need then to define another value on the other side which will allow nation, uh, nation A to gain. From this clearly, you can see that uh, what we are calculating then is simply just a gain. But even if nation A was to, uh, to maintain the level of consumption of nation Y as the initial uh, level before trade, meaning nation A will still be okay as long as the other commodity is uh, on the advantage side. Which means that then we will have the 4Y less or equal to 6X and then define the upper boundary. Now to get the upper boundary, we need to analyze what happens with nation B. So for nation B, 6 units of X will equal 12 units of Y since both require 6 hours to produce. Which means that nation B 
will be willing to trade anything less than 12 units of X for 6 units of, uh, sorry, 12 units of Y for 6 units of X from nation A and in turn, uh, the nation will gain. Now, what this uh, means is that uh, nation A then gains if it trades 6X for more than 4Y and nation B gains if it gives up less than 12Y for 6X. Given this analysis, it means that we now have our mutually advantageous uh, range for trade, which is uh, 4Y must be less than 6X, must be less than 12Y. Now, what this range is telling us is that for the two nations to gain in trade, there should be this range. If there is any equal sign, it means that the other nation, there is no gain for the other nation. So it means the other nation without an equal sign would gain if the amount uh, which have been traded are uh, equal to the value on the range. Okay, so let's uh, now uh, clearly state this. So this range clearly shows that the exchange of 6x for 6y between nation A and nation B is not the only possible trade between the two nations. Anything satisfying the range is true, meaning that nation uh, A can decide to exchange uh, more, so say 6x, maybe for 5y, and so on. So the more it gets of y, the better it will become, and the less it gains of it, the, way, uh, the worse it becomes, such that if it goes to 4, then nation A will not gain anything from y. Clearly then, from this, it should be noted that the total gains from trade will be 8. That is the upper boundary minus the lower boundary, which means the 12 minus the 4, which are defining the mutually beneficial range. It should be noted that the closer the rate of exchange is to 4y equal to 6x, which is the internal rate for nation A, the smaller is the share of gains going to nation A, such that if nation uh, A exchanges 6x for 4y, it will gain nothing from such a trade. And if nation A exchanges a 6x for 5y, it means nation A will gain 1y. If nation A exchanges 6x for 6y, it will gain 2y. And therefore, we will note further that the closer the rate of exchange is to 6x equal to 12, which is the internal rate for nation B, the greater is the share of gains going to nation A. Because if nation A exchanges uh, 6x for 12y, it means it will capture all the gains from trade, which is equal to 8. So the closer the range is for, uh, to 6x equal to 12y, the greater the uh, earnings uh, or the gains accrue to nation A. Okay, with that, let's now uh, continue with comparative advantage, but now look at the opportunity uh, cost approach to measuring comparative advantage. Now, this approach was uh, brought forward by Habla in uh, 1936, who explained this comparative uh, advantage uh, using the opportunity cost. And uh, uh, with this view, the law of comparative advantage is then sometimes called the law of comparative costs because what we will be looking at now is comparing the costs between the two nations that are involved in the trade. Uh, specifically, the law of the opportunity cost theory is the uh, says that the cost of a commodity is the amount of a second commodity that must be given up to, real, to release just enough resources to produce one additional unit of the first commodity. In other words, from uh, basic microeconomics, we note that opportunity cost is uh, the value of the best alternative that is given up. And if we measure this, uh, the marginal of it, we get the additional cost that a nation will incur in order for it to produce an additional unit of a given commodity. 
So in cost here, we refer to the amounts that are given up. So consequently, the nation with the lower opportunity cost in the production of a commodity has a comparative advantage in that commodity, which means that it will have a comparative disadvantage in the other commodity. If nation A has a lower opportunity cost in producing commodity X, it means that nation A has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity X. And if it has a higher opportunity cost in producing Y, it means that nation A has a comparative disadvantage in the production of commodity Y. Let's take a look at an example. Uh, if in the absence of trade, nation A gives up two-thirds of a unit of X to release just enough resources to produce one additional unit of Y domestically, then the opportunity cost of Y is two-thirds of a unit of X. Or simply put, the opportunity cost of Y is equal to 2 over 3x in nation A. Now, it should be emphasized here that when you are measuring the opportunity cost of an item, we measure it uh, with respect to the commodity of the other item, the units of the other item. So, if you write that the opportunity cost of y is equal to 2 over 3, then this will be wrong because it should be measured in terms of the other commodity. So the opportunity cost of Y in this case will be 2 over 3X. So take note that you always need to attach the uh, measure for opportunity cost. If you are looking at mangoes and bananas, the opportunity, if these were mangoes and bananas, then the opportunity cost of mangoes Okay, will be equal to two thirds, two over three units of bananas. Let's uh, just use B for now. So bananas. So you should always measure opportunity cost in uh, terms of uh, the uh, commodity that is foregone. Okay, so uh, if one Y is equal to two X in nation B, then the opportunity cost of Y is lower in nation A than it is in nation B. Because in nation A, to uh, produce an additional unit of Y, you need, you need to give up only two-thirds of X. But in nation B, to produce one additional unit of Y, you need to give up two units of X, meaning you're giving up more in nation B to produce ad an additional unit of Y uh, compared to what you are giving up in nation A. And therefore, nation A has a lower opportunity cost uh, of producing commodity Y compared to nation, uh, nation B. And this means that nation A has a comparative advantage or comparative cost in the production of commodity Y, while nation B has uh, a comparative disadvantage in the production of commodity Y. Okay, let's uh, uh, proceed and uh, look uh, at this in more detail. So we've already stated that nation B has a comparative advantage in commodity X, since nation A has a comparative advantage in nation Y, in commodity Y. And therefore, nation A should specialize in producing Y and export part of its uh, products uh, in exchange for commodity X uh, in nation B. And similarly, Similarly, nation B should specialize in producing X and export part of it in exchange for Y in nation A. So the principle still remains the same, that the nation with a comparative advantage in a given commodity must specialize in producing that commodity and then exchange part of the output with the other nation for the commodity of its comparative disadvantage. Let's take a look at another example. 
Suppose we have uh, this information, this data here, where nation A is producing five units of commodity X in one hour, while nation B is producing four units of commodity X in one hour. For commodity Y, nation A is producing 10 units in one hour, while nation B is producing two units in one hour. Clearly, from where we are coming from, we can see that nation A has a compared uh, as an absolute advantage in producing both commodity X and commodity Y. And nation B has an absolute disadvantage in producing both commodity X and commodity Y. But however, we can see that uh, we have different levels, the absolute disadvantages are different for the two between the two nations in the production of X and the production of Y. As such, we need to find the opportunity cost of producing these commodities. Now, if nation A wanted to produce an additional unit of commodity uh, X, it means that it has to give up some units of commodity Y. So to produce an additional unit of commodity X, nation, uh, nation uh, A will give up 10 units of uh, commodity uh, Y and then uh, it will have to produce 5 units. So this is to measure in terms of per unit. So you get the foregone, which is 10, because this, because this is the value that we have. So it will be the foregone over the gain. So you are giving up the 10 and then you are gaining 5 so that you get the least value to come to a unit, meaning for it to produce one unit of X, it will need to give up two units uh, of Y. And for nation A, to produce an additional unit of Y, it has to give up some amount of X. To find out how many units of X must be given up, we find the value, so the, the foregone in this case will be the five units of X, and the gain will be the 10 units of y so that we get the per unit and we see that this will give us 1 over 2 uh, x meaning that uh, for nation a to produce an additional unit of y it has to give up a half a unit of x for nation b for it to produce an additional unit of x it means we get it has to give up some units of y so we are giving up y so we get the value 2 and divided by what we uh, the side of the commodity where we are gaining and we see that in this case we have uh, 1 over 2y so we have 1 over 2y so meaning for nation b to produce an additional unit of x it has to give up half a unit of y for it to produce an additional unit of Y, it has to give up some of the units of X. So it means that we can find this. So for gone, we are giving up 4 and we are gaining 2 because these are the values that we have. So given this then, we notice that uh, the opportunity cost will be 2X. Meaning for nation B, to produce an additional unit of commodity Y, it has to give up 2 units of commodity X. And if we put this, uh, this information into a table, then we will have data which will look like this. So the opportunity cost of X in nation A is 2Y. In nation B, it's 1 over 2Y. The opportunity cost of uh, Y in nation A is 1 over 2X. And in nation B, it's uh, 2X. So clearly, we can see that uh, nation A has uh, a lower opportunity cost in the production of uh, commodity Y compared to the production of commodity X. Because for the production of commodity Y, it will only give up half uh, of X, while in the production of commodity X, it will have to give up two units of Y. So therefore, it means it's giving up more if it's producing X compared to what it will be giving up if it is producing Y. If you look at nation B, nation B has a lower opportunity cost in the production of commodity X, but a higher opportunity cost in the production of commodity Y. 
given uh, what Hebler stated, then nation A has a comparative advantage in the production of commodity uh, Y, while nation B has an absolute as a comparative advantage in the production of commodity X. For the two to gain, nation A must specialize in the production of commodity Y, while nation B must specialize in the production of commodity X. Given that the output is produced, the two nations can gain by exchanging part of the output with the other nation for the commodity of its comparative disadvantage. In this case, nation A will have to export part of the output of commodity Y to nation B and then import part of the output of nation B's X uh, uh, as its uh, import. And the two nations uh, will gain according to what the theory uh, states. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you have uh, questions, please send an email to moaoelias at gmail.com. See you in the third session.